I was in the bookstore almost a year ago now as of this video spending money on manga because my pay at the time was something I could actually live off of and have fun with. And in the bookstore I found this manga that stuck out to me. I don't know if it was the title or the familiar art style or just the first page but whatever it was it caught my attention. And honestly, I don't regret it for a second. Ojo Jojo is a manga made by Kuo Kyo Shinja, the creator of I Can't Understand What My Husband Is Saying and Kobayashi's Maid Dragon. While one was more focused on an anime fan being married and the other with dragons in suburbia, I have to say that this is by far my favorite work from Kyoshinja. The story is about a rich girl named Haru Jigoku Meguri, who's gifted with both intelligence and beauty, and Kawayanagi Surezure, an eccentric boy who dresses in the 20th century fashion and has a habit of gazing up at the clouds for hours on end. Haru is prideful, arrogant, and egocentric, while Kawayanagi is unable to strike even the most basic of conversations. The shortcomings seem to lead to them to be shunned by the rest of their classmates, and so the two gravitate towards one another. The lonely classmates find a mutual friend in Akane Tendo, a jelly girl who finds pleasure in seeing them together. Now with her confidence restored, Haru and Kawayanagi embark on a journey towards bettering themselves. So that's the synopsis, that's how it's described, but it's a bit more than that. Ojo Jojo, with how it's played out, it has some pretty decent focus on identity, isolation, personas, and self-reflection. To make this clear, I'll only be covering the first two volumes, because a massive part of what I'm talking about is centered on here, and if you like what you see or hear in this video, I encourage you to check it out. Let's talk about the two main leads, Jikoku Meguri and Kawayanaki, and how both of them are basically alternate perspectives on social anxiety. Jikoku is a rich, wealthy girl, but her snobbish, better-than-you persona is really just a front. In reality, she's actually a young girl who wants to have friends, but her status has given her this divide between others. So much so that she leans into it more as a defense mechanism. The more honest and vulnerable side shows best when she's around Kawayanagi. Kawa very much comes off as a loner, go-with-the-flow type person, but in reality, he kind of beats himself up over it. He wants to have friends, he wants to talk to others, he just doesn't really have the social skills to do such a thing. Both of them are by all accounts different, but that's what helps establish their connection and relationship between one another. Their outgoing personas end up drawing them closer together, and they show sides of themselves that would really only be known by them and anyone close to them. What's interesting about this is both the ages and the setting of the characters in the story, both being in school. It's no secret that school sucks, mainly because most kids are just assholes and in their own little world. And that plays into this in a big way. Jigoku is later on revealed to have had friends, but they all just left her because they took her being rich and showing off her new toys as her acting like she's better than them, when in actuality, that's just how she was trying to get along with them. As time went on, she leaned more into the rich girl act and found out, of course, that people absolutely hated her, putting on fake smiles and laughing at her, talking behind her back. She does this not because she's a cliche or a stereotype, but because she uses that very aspect as a way to defend herself from being hurt because being honest to her has led to her being isolated. She can't win either way, so why not be the class punching bag anyhow? It's a common thought when you're young. When you're treated like a black sheep and no one wants to see you in any other way, why not lean into it? Not like you have any other choice. To the person, there's no real way to turn this around, not without the people around the person. And that's why to her, Kawayanagi is an irreplaceable friend, because he doesn't care that much about her being rich and is very nonchalant about it all. When a rich girl facade breaks down, he doesn't treat her any different. As for Kawa, well everyone sees him as a loner, as that quiet guy that's hard to get along with. He knows this, and he kinda hates that part of himself, cause ultimately much like Jigoku, Kawa is isolated, but more so through his lack of energy and friendly outgoing personality. He wants to have friends, so he even considers changing how he comes off, but despite that, Jigoku interacts with him on a daily basis, even bringing him to a sporting event and hearing what he has to say as its helpful advice. So it was no real surprise when Jigoku realizes she's got a crush on him and eventually asks him out, he says yes. Both of them from then on, while not necessarily doing typical couple activities, they honestly act more so like they have been. Good friends. Sure, they're a couple, but that part of the story may as well have never happened, and they'd still have this strong connection between one another. They may not have been there to see each other's past and how they come off towards others, but 
They're both isolated outcasts in their own ways, and that commonality is what brings them closer together. Along this time, another character comes into the mix, a transfer student by the name of Chris Portman. Early on, Jigoku Meguri's father arranges for her to marry someone, and she declines. And that's pretty much where that ended. Until now. Because he was apparently one of the possible candidates to be arranged for her. Both Chris and Jigoku have pretty similar introductions, right down to looking down at Kawa Yanagi as a commoner. But the difference here is that Chris and Jigoku's statuses are utilized in opposite ways. Whereas Jigoku's status was more of a front for her more honest and kind-hearted personality, Chris is the reverse. He's more friendly towards everyone, but treats Kawa like dirt because he's Jigoku's boyfriend, and wants him to break up with her because he thinks he's the more deserving of her. Whereas with Jigoku Meguri and Kawa Yanagi, while their outgoing personalities have led to them be more isolated, their more honest personalities, if better realized by others, can definitely lead to them making plenty of friends. With Chris, it's the opposite. He's rich and better than you and fully believes that, and that's the major difference here. Jigoku and Kawa have had time to reflect and desire to bear themselves, not just for the sake of the people in their lives, but it's because of what they themselves want. So what I think is so great about them, both as individuals and as a couple. They're flawed, and yet they know it and want to bear themselves. Well, there's more to talk about, I haven't even talked about Akane and all this. I'll leave that for if I ever decide to do a full discussion on the manga. Self-improvement on Teen Saren's stories is always a plus on my book, because I like coming across stories with okay or even unlikable characters and seeing them grow and develop with time. It's that notion of people being able to change that I think Ojo Jojo captures pretty well, honestly. 